Welcome to Health and Wellness. I'm your host, Kierney Warren, and on this episode, I'm speaking with Mark Bados, who is the Program Director at the Carter and Center for Arts Therapy, which is a branch of the Settlement Music School. Located in Northeast Philadelphia, the Settlement Music School is one of the largest community schools for, for the arts in the United States. Thank you for sharing your time with us today, Mark. Uh, I understand that uh, the center is fairly new. It opened in July of 2014. Can you explain the relationship between the Carter and Sitter for Arts Therapy and the Settlement Music School? Sure. Um, Carter and Center had a long history with Settlement Music School. In fact, it was a pilot program in the early um, Mid early 70s, uh, as a music therapy program, a pilot program that settlement was exploring with Moss Rehabilitation Hospital. Um, this was pushed forward by uh, Emmanuel Carden, who had an interest in uh, music, making it accessible to all individuals, um, not just the typical students after school, but also children who have disabilities. Um, from that, we've developed into the Carden Institute, which came into place about 1985. Um, later, had an actual building next to settlement here in the Northeast, built particularly for the therapy program. And from that, um, that ran a span to 2014, like you said, and then Cardin Institute had to close, and at that closing point, settlement had taken the program back as its own, as the Cardin Center for Arts Therapy, continuing the legacy that Manny had wanted to have music and the arts accessible to people with uh, disabilities. Okay, so you, you've already spoke about the significance of the Card Arts Center uh, here in the Northeast. What types of students uh, do you service? It's quite a realm. Uh, therapists have different specialties in different areas. Uh, autism being a large component right now, uh, children with autism or on the autistic spectrum disorder, uh, on the spectrum, as they say, ASD or the spectrum. Uh, so there's a variety of clients or children that come to Cardin for music therapy services or dance movement or art therapy. Um, that With intellectual disabilities, those are the two largest populations that we serve, but we do serve other populations with physical disabilities, visual impairments, hearing impairments, uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, we also go out into the community, not only at settlement sites, but at like Ronald McDonald House, helping families uh, with their child being in the hospital, working with the families as they return to the house in the evening after spending a whole day in the hospital, working with the families that are in support of the individual at the hospital. Um, so there's quite a range. Um, behavioral health disorders is another one. Uh, as a junk therapy to their primary therapist. So there's quite a range. What are, can you list the, the types of therapy that is offered here at the school and what types of classes and exercises go along with um, those therapies? Uh, music therapy is the largest component. Obviously, we're in a music school, so uh, music therapy is the largest uh, offering. And then we have a dance movement therapist on staff, as well as myself. We're both dance movement therapists, so there's two of us, and there are two art therapists on staff. Um, the sessions vary between the modalities, but what they afford to the individual is a nonverbal expression that they don't have access to in the community out there, uh, whether they're with a verbal therapist or some other type of therapy. The creative arts therapy allow them a nonverbal type of expression, particularly like the uh, autism or Asperger's type of client who may have communication difficulties, but some of the arts allow them to express themselves in a nonverbal means. Um, that is the powerful tool of creative arts therapy, is using that nonverbal medium to enhance the growth of the individual, depending on the disorder that can vary. Uh, we talked about populations, and we can talk about specifics, but in general, it's using the arts modality as a vehicle to improve the growth or health of that individual. Are there any specific uh, requirements or qualifications for a student to enroll in the program here? 
We don't like to think of it as a requirement. We want to think of it as if it's some type of benefit to that individual that would come in. We do an assessment for the in-house program, the program that individuals come to settlement locations. We do an assessment to determine you know, the type of goals that we would lurk on, uh, the length of the session, are they appropriate for the setting. Um, and pretty much, for the most part, individuals are um, the circumstances where they may not be is someone with a behavioral health issue who does not have a primary support, we kind of encourage them to go seek that out first before coming to us as a secondary benefit. Um, and there's some individuals, very rarely, but some individuals who just don't engage in the arts modality. And we talk to, they're usually from a residential agency, we usually talk to the residential um, supervisor or house supervisor how they might go about providing an arts experience without being in art therapy or music therapy um, at home uh, because the individual probably would not benefit other than a passive participation in the modality. Um, something they could do at home, not necessarily come here for, where a therapist can make an intervention actually engaging the client in the modality. Uh, so that's the rare few that that happens. You spoke about arts therapy uh, assisting in in a nonverbal form. Can you speak a little bit more about the importance of arts therapy and what is the definition of arts therapy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're similar across the modalities of art, music, and dance. Um, it is to promote wellness or health, uh, whether it's cognition, uh, social health, or emotional health. They use the art modality as a way to improve those areas of wellness in the individual. Specifically for modalities, um, say a child who's having difficulty at school bullying, uh, we can get a clearer picture through one of the modalities depending on what they have a inkling to, whether it's art, music, or dance, a clearer expression of what actually that person is feeling in the arts modality. So their aggression, that they are, or um, depression, depending on what's going on for the individual, may be more clearly seen in a drawing, may clearly depict uh, what is going on for that child than having a dialogue with that child verbally first. It also allows the relationship between the therapist and the child, uh, it's a buffer, so we might get to that material that's, that's bothering that child a little quicker, but not direct through verbal interaction but through artwork, through movement or dance, uh, through music. It's a bridge to get to that point where we can actually start talking and going into where that child's having difficulty with the bullying or whatever's going on for that individual. Um, it kind of creates a quicker road, a shorter road, to what is going on for that individual. And then we actually use the modality as a way to enhance or develop new skills. Um, in a group situation, uh, children who have impulsivity issues, who may not be able to take turns in a group, who just want to grab for the instruments and not really ready to. So we work on everybody having the instrument, everybody taking the turn, which sounds basic, but we do it through music, not so much verbal direction, and being able to listen to each other, like, okay, it's time to listen to Tommy playing the drum. Let's listen to that. And uh, he plays. When someone intervenes, we just say, we're just listening to the drums now. So we don't necessarily say Tommy, but we use the drums. We use the instruments as a means of a way to dialogue about taking turns. It's just a small sample of, I'm not a music therapist, so I don't want to say too much of music. But we do something similar in movement where we take turns and expression and learning to take turns. Um, and movement dialogue versus verbal dialogue and hopefully that will translate into verbal dialogue later. Um, things happen on a movement level first before they become verbal, so we kind of work on that early motor expression first and hopefully that ingrains into more of a verbal and being able to take turns as a group member down the road. Um, it's just another way of reaching the child or the individual, the adult, um, that we kind of overlook in society a lot. Uh, the arts are kind of taken granted for, I think, a lot, and they do serve a lot of importance in the development of an individual that, you know, we kind of put aside 
and worry about testing and forget about what the arts do to support education, learning, emotional learning, social learning, the importance of the arts. And that's what creative arts therapists focus on, that importance, that, that link between why is the arts necessary, not just a recreational activity, why is it therapeutic? Because it helps the development of an individual. So what are these students? Is there a age cap or who are the students that, um, that attend? No age cap. Um, we have a therapist that goes out to an assisted living in Dresher um, who helps adults with dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, that's her area of expertise in looking at how to engage them, pulling from their strengths, as we all do, but for her, that particular population, bringing them into the here and now through music and making them present and more aware in their daily life. For the students who attend this school, do they come in with some level of experience in the arts, whether it's they play, they've already played an uh, instrument or They've had some art classes. Chances are most do not come in with an experience, and it's not required. Uh, it's not about acquiring music skills or art skills or, you know, ballet or playing the violin. Uh, that's not our focus. It may be secondary focus for some of the individuals that come to us, but that's not a requirement when they come in. Um, they may develop that as they progress through our program. Uh, others, it's never thought about because it's not the issue that's immediate for that individual. Uh, we do have some children on the spectrum who take typical lessons from piano teachers versus music therapists, you know, or they go from music therapy into a traditional music lesson because they've developed a foundation with a therapist and they've developed themselves through school and so on that they are able to actually take a lesson, practice the next week, come back with improvements uh, and not necessarily need a therapist to do that. Who are the instructors here, and what types of backgrounds do they come from professionally? Uh, all creative arts therapists, and it differs from music slightly than art and dance, but have a master's degree in their particular modality. Um, music does have an undergraduate level, and as far as completion and being able to practice, that's slowly going to transitioning into a requirement of master's as well. Uh, dance and art have always required uh, a master's level of education and uh, they have preparatory classes where you prepare for the master's level of education but music is the only one that actually has a complete package of an undergraduate degree in it and you can actually practice it and then that may be changing in the next few years I think they're working towards like I said about the a master's degree um, I'm not sure about the musicians because that's not my side of the programming at settlement um, I'm sure a lot of them do have masters in their instrument or music education or both. Um, one of our therapists at the Carnegie Center has a master's in music education as well as music therapy. Is there a cost to attend the school? There is. Uh, it's out-of-pocket cost. Uh, at one time it was reimbursable through insurance that is no longer available. Part of the reason of Carden's closing, not all of it, but and now it's mostly through private pay. Um, there is a financial aid offered through Settlement Music School. For those families that demonstrate a need for financial aid, they would apply when they register to see if they're eligible for the financial aid. When do you suggest someone seek out art therapy? Um, if there's an inclination for nonverbal expression in a particular modality that the parent sees or the, the family sees for the individual, um, they for an older adult, they had it as an experience as a child or in their adult life. Um, they value art as experience, but now are having trouble with their current state of wellness and may, this might be a way to access some strength and wellness in that individual. Uh, and those individuals that have a hard time communicating, whether it's autism or a child dealing with emotional stress, um, the arts uh, make it a little bit easier to for the therapist to help that child or individual access um, some of the things that are caught and not being able to be verbalized by the individual by accessing it through the arts first. Uh, and that gives the therapist an opportunity to see what's going on in the arts modality, but also helps that individual be able to come to terms to express it in some 
way to another individual rather than keeping it within themselves. Is art therapy uh, a form of um, standalone therapy or is it uh, used with other traditional means of, of therapy? Usually with traditional other means. You will see um, mental health units in hospitals as an adjunct therapy to what's going on. Um, so it's usually considered an adjunct therapy, not a primary source of therapy, but an adjunctive therapy. Because it's, it's an expressive arts experience. Uh, it's, it is somewhat medically based. I come from Drexel Hahnemann's program, so we do have a strong medical background. Um, but there is the medical side as far as medications and things like that that need to be addressed with the individual um, in case they are needed. So we're more of an adjunct, working on the expressive component of the individual, getting them to talk, uh, develop social skills, uh, cognitive skills. So we're in the likes of PT and OT, but we're on the emotional behavioral side of those realms of therapies that support the, the uh, primary physicians. What would you <clears throat> What would you say is uh, the the center's primary goal and focus for the students who uh, attend? And then when they leave, what what do you want? What do you wish the students take away with them? Uh, pleasurable art experience. <laughs> That's the simplest phrase I could put it into. Uh, that the child or adult enjoys the music or dance or whatever the art experience that they're having at settlement, that they take that with them. Um, not necessarily meaning that it's the goals, because that's our side of the thing, but they experience it as an art experience um, that they enjoy, even though there is work behind the scenes. Where can uh, potential students find out about um, the services here? Settlement Music School has a website at smsmusic.org and under that website there's a list of programs and you would look under the program site for the Carnage Center for Arts Therapy and it'll list information about the program as well as how to contact my office. Thank you so much Mark for taking time out to speak with us about Arts Therapy and uh, the Settlement Music School. Thank, thank you. you. For, thank you for taking the time to come out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching Health and Wellness. Again, I'm your host, Kieran e. Warren. For more information about the Cardon Center for Arts Therapy at the Settlement Music School, please go to their website.